What's up guys, it's Open Quant here, ready to solve question number six, three sticks. In this problem, we're given a stick that is one meter in length. We randomly select two points on the stick, break it at these two points, and get three resultant pieces. The question then asks for the probability that the smallest piece is at most 0.2 meters. This problem, I will admit, is slightly more challenging than the others we've posted so far because it requires a few key insights and observations. To start understanding, let's, get with, let's start with an illustration. So here we have our one meter long stick broken at two points, which we'll call X and Y. X and Y are just respective lengths, points along the unit zero to one. To get respective lengths, the first would just be X minus zero or X, the second, y minus x, and the third, 1 minus y. The problem then asks at the probability that the smallest of these three pieces, the probability that the length of the smallest of these three pieces is at most 0.2 meters. So let's write this in. The minimum of the length of these three pieces is at most 0.2 meters, which also means less than or equal to 0.2. Now this is not a very easy probability statement to just evaluate or even to look at intuitively and understand. X and Y are both uniform random variables between taking on values between 0 and 1. They can take on any value between these two, um, and we're asked to find the minimum of expressions which involve both of these two independent random variables. Let's start by simplifying this statement a little bit. So we can use the complement rule to see that the minimum being less than or equal to 0.2 is also the same as the minimum being greater than 0.2, just you know, very simply. Uh, if this happens, this is not, and if this happens, this is not. So this is the complement of this uh, expression. So we'll just say one minus that. And to further evaluate this statement right here, we can think kind of intuitively, if the minimum of the three lengths are is greater than 0.2, it also means that each respective length of the three sub pieces are all greater than 0.2. Because if the minimum is greater than 0.2, that means all of them must be greater than or equal to 0.2. So we'll say that x, y minus x, 1 minus y, are all greater than or equal to 0.2. So this, in my opinion, is a much easier expression to evaluate than our original one involving a minimum uh, function. So again, it's 1 minus this expression. So the second kind of key observation or insight to solving this problem would be how you actually approach breaking down the random variables x and y. Uh, as we know from above, they follow a uniform distribution. and We could use uh, some expression involving convolutions and PDFs to solve these respective expressions, but it can get quite challenging and complicated. Instead, I proposed a more visual method. So we have our two axes, x and y, each correlating to the random variables x and y, and they can take on values between 0 and 1, so 1 right here. And this square, or should be a square, represents the entire outcome space of our joint distribution between x and y. For example, a point there corresponds to an x value of, let's say, 0 0.2, y value around 0 0.8, indicating an event where our first break is at 0 0.2, and our second break is at 0.8. And in this case, you know, our first sublength would have length 0 0.2, second sublength 0.2, and third 0.6. So in this particular example, for this point right there, our minimum value does in fact equal 0.2. By partitioning our entire alchemy space, which is this square, into 
various areas corresponding to whether or not an event has occurred, we can begin to understand and compute this probability that we're asked that we need to solve. So the first kind of way to partition the space is to actually see that right here, because we denote X as the first break and Y as the second break, Y will be greater than or equal to X in all of the cases that we've determined. So we're actually splitting up the entire outcome space into these two triangles and we're restricting all of our outcomes to only this upper triangle, simply because as we defined in our example, Y is the second break, X is the first break, so Y is greater than or equal to X in every scenario. Once we've defined, I'm gonna denote our entire outcome space with this, this blue color. So all possible values that we are, that can occur must happen within this blue space. We can now further partition our outcome space based off of the three conditions, which is that x, y minus x, and one minus y are all greater than or equal to 0.2. We'll start with the first. So x being greater than or equal to 0.2. We can write 0.2 along the x-axis, draw a vertical line, and because x is greater than or equal to the value defined at this boundary, we know that x must be to the right of this triangle. Second, we'll start with the third one actually, one minus y is greater than or equal to 0.2. We can use some algebra, minus y is greater than or equal to negative 0.8, y is less than or equal to 0.8. And this simply occurs because when dividing an inequality by a negative value, you reverse the sign, the inequality. So y is less than or equal to 0.8. Say so point A is right around here. Draw our horizontal line. And Y is less than this point A value, meaning that it must be below this line. Okay, so now we have our inner triangle, which is defined by the two conditions, two of the three conditions. The third condition says that Y minus X, this middle condition right there, y minus x is greater than or equal to 0.2. And just by careful inspection, we can verbalize the meaning of this as y is not, is at least 0.2 greater than x. So I'm going to redraw our triangle down here just so that it's a little bit bigger. So we have 0.8 right here along the y, point two down here. This expression we also know is, this point right there is also point eight along the x and point two along the y. So let's now begin to continue partitioning our space based off of this last condition. So y is at least point two greater than x. Which this means that, let's say our x value, which is you know along this axis, y value along this axis, if our x value is 0.2, which is an entirely valid uh, value, just because we know that it's within this triangle, our y value must be at least 0.4. It must be at least 0.4 because it must be at least 0.2 greater than x. That's what this third condition states. Similarly, if our y value is 0.8, so up here, then our x value can be at most 0.6, right here, just because we y value, the y must be at least 0.2 greater than x. And we'll notice that we're continuing to partition this inner space by this triangle, and all values greater or above that line are valid. So we now have this really small triangle, which, you know, is this one right there, as a subset of our entire big blue triangle, and the proportion of our small triangle to the blue triangle is the probability that we are trying to solve, this one right here. So let's find the area of this small inner triangle. So we know the height of it. The height of it is 0.4, the width also 0.4, area of a triangle is 0.4 times 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, 0.4,
divided by 2, point one, one six divided by 2, or point zero 0.08. That's the area of this, again, this shaded inner triangle. We now need to divide that by our entire outcome space, the area of our entire outcome space, which we've defined to be this upper blue triangle. Uh, half the half a unit square is just 0 0.5. Again, it's just half of a, a one by one unit square. So half of that is 0 0.5. So we now divide 0 0.08 by 0 0.5 to get 0.16. So 0 0.16, we can now substitute back is this expression right here. So we now have this equals one minus 0.16 or 0.84. And what was this, what did this entire expression mean? It was the probability at the minimum of the three lengths is less than or equal to 0.2. Now say it's 0.84. We're now going to use code to simulate the, the last problem, which, you know, it was a little bit unintuitive and can be quite challenging, especially if you uh, didn't see either of the optimizations. So now we're just going to simulate a trial, which is uh, breaking a stick in this case. So we have our X and Y, which are random uniform zero to one random variables. And then again, we restrict X to be the minimum of the two values, Y to be the maximum of the two values. We now compute the length of the three sides, just as we did in the problem x, y minus s, and 1 minus y, and we return the minimum of the three sides. Now 1 million times, we simulate a trial and add the value of that trial to our results list. And we compute the proportion of values where the minimum was less than or equal to 0.2 to the length of the entire results list. And again, we are looking for a value close to 0.84, which is what we derives the theoretical value to be. Let's see how close we are. All right, first one, 0 0.8404, 0 0.8401, 0 0.839. Again, so we're getting very values very close to 0.84 because we're simulating the trial a lot of times, you know, a million times, and uh, proving that the results and the probability that we computed in the problem is indeed correct.